Oh, that was a close one. We're recording now, so do as you want to do. All right. Hello, hello. Welcome to the... Oh, wait. Hold on. What are we calling this again? I fully need to know the name. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, it's a good start. The, the, Classic. Wasn't it the New Zealand Aquarium podcast or something? I think it was something similar to that. All right. We can just roll with that if you want. Cool. Do that. Okay. Second, second try. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to the New Zealand Aquarium podcast. Um, I'm Cam um, from the Aquarium Project up here in Auckland. And, um, yeah, the idea of this podcast is just we're going to, obviously, myself, Cam, and Ryan, who will introduce themselves in a second, have good, different uh, perspectives on the industry in New Zealand and in the hobby and everything. So we thought it would be a good idea to be able to share some um, insights and, and discussions around the, the hobby that might hopefully add some value to people. Um, so, yeah, I'll let, let you guys introduce yourself. I don't know who wants to go first, but, um, yeah, that's me basically. So, yeah. Okay, I'll go next. I'm Ryan. Um I've been keeping fish for a long time, so I just like to talk sh- rubbish about them. And, um, yeah, pretty much just want to keep these guys honest and um, give them a bit of crap. So. <laughs> and I'm Cam from the fish room down here in Nelson. Um, also in an aquarium store, I've been keeping fish for a long time. Uh, been in and out of different, different avenues of the hobby over the time that I've been here. And... Um, yeah, quite looking forward to giving this podcast a, a good crack and see how we go. Sounds good. So, um, yeah, I suppose you guys will get to know us all a bit better as we as we chug along. Um, but so we thought for today we'll do a bit more of a kind of ease ourselves into it and just hit, hit it with a nice and fun top five. Um, so we're going to be talking about the top five best beginner fish um, that obviously that's available in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, we we I'm I'm excited to see everyone's different perspectives and different ways of um, thinking about the topic. So yeah, um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know who wants to go first. Um, I'll, I guess I'll go first. And you start. Throw one out there. We and can. We'll, we'll tear it apart. Absolutely. Right. Sounds like Come a. Back. Sounds like a good plan. So the first one I had on my list was platies, because there's kind of two reasons. Number one, everyone, especially like kids and stuff, who wants to start keeping fish, the number one thing is like colors, and with platies, the best thing is. Pretty much any color you can think of, you can get one in that color. Or you get one with like different patterns and stuff. But they're still very peaceful, very easy to keep, all that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think they're very – it's one that pretty much everyone can do. So, yeah, that that, that would be my first one. Um, what do you guys reckon? Yeah, I guess um... – um... I was thinking about this too, and obviously I keep African cichlids, but um, not many of them are suitable for beginners because most beginners start off with a really small tank, you know? So <laughs> I do have one yeah. I want to throw out there later. But, um, yeah, so I, I I tend to agree on platies as well. Also, the cool thing about platies is if you put them in a tank and you put enough plants in there, you can sometimes get some babies, which is pretty cool for a beginner. Um, yeah, especially for kids, I find, course, as well. Yeah, the key distinction, of course, is getting healthy ones to start with. Um, you see some pretty munted ones in fish shops sometimes. So that's you know, actually part of why I chose platies because, like, the the obvious um, like fish in that kind of space that most people would go for would be guppies. But I consciously didn't choose guppies just because they're 
the ones we get in New Zealand are very like um, it's hard to get good ones, and that means that like you know if you have a little you know small water quality problems or something like that, they just die because they're not very strong. But I find with platies they're much more forgiving in that sense, but you don't have to sacrifice the colors or the patterns or like the activity or anything like that. But I do agree there is problems. I just think that platies is better than, you know, your guppies or that sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I um, I was coming into this thinking we are going to have a wee fight about some of these lists, but I'm, I'm 100 sure I'm on board with the platies to start with. They're on top of my list as well. Uh, bright, colourful, active, hardy, um, easy to spawn, can go in a smaller tank, relatively cheap. Like, there's a lot of positives that go for them, and I think they're a fantastic alternative to guppies, as you were saying, for the exact same reasons. Um, yeah, in my mind, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a platy. In fact, I think they're the top of the pile when it comes to a, to a beginner fish. Um, they get to a good size as well, which is quite nice. They're not sort of um, little midgets in the back, if that makes sense. They, they become quite bold um, and keep them in a keep them in a group and they show some really good interactive skills as a unit as well as towards their owner as well. So I, I think platies are easily the best beginner fish around, to be fair. Good to hear. Well, I thought what, I'd ease us into it, but I have I do have some on the list that I'd imagine we'll have fights about, but you know, <laughs> start it off slow and we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah. so yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna go next then, Cam, with your number two oh, suggestion? Yeah. yeah, so my second one is <clears throat> uh Zebra Daniels. Again, oh. they're bright, they're colourful, they're active, they're hardy, the back they're re- ridiculously active. Um, I think they fill up the top area really, really well. Uh, if you're that way inclined, they're a really good um, egg scatterer to begin spawning with if you want to go down that route as well. Uh, they were a little bit hard to get for a little while, but they seem to have come back um, as some people commercially breeding them now. So uh, I think zebra granules are a really, really good option. Um, the long thin ones in particular are quite nice as well. So there's a couple of variations when it comes to that. So I think yeah, they're, they're right up there really easy to feed. You don't tend to have a lot of issues with them as far as diseases or anything like that. They're, they're pretty hardy. So, um, yeah, Super Daniels get on with pretty much everything. So that's where I'm, where I'm at for my number two. Because we're not allowed to um, import them anymore, right? Eh? Correct. Yeah. So what's yeah. here is here, um, unfortunately. But yeah. most of this, there are some people now producing them on a commercial scale, so they shouldn't disappear anytime soon. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's another reason actually, to keep them, like you say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've actually I've got a group in with my um, you know, the plant retail tank. Mm-hmm. There's just mm-hmm. like a bunch of zebra daniels, and I think they work really well with plants. Like, yeah, as you're saying, like the way they swim, they're kind of like darting in between the leaves and stuff. It's quite cool to watch. Um, yeah, because obviously for beginners, a lot of people are going to want to at least give natural plants a go. So. Those two things work quite well together, I reckon. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, all good. All right, well, yeah. Yeah. well I agree with that one too. Around. I think it's good, especially if they're not allowed to be imported. We should keep as many fish as we can, as aren't allowed to be imported as we can because we've lo- we lose so much. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah, I don't think we're at risk of losing Danios, but you never know what's going to happen. If, no, so if I can expect you to start cranking the to... zebra Danios in, Ryan? <laughs> what's that? So I can expect you to start cranking the zebra daniels? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Um, I think it's down at Otago University. They're working on uh, studies with zebra daniels. So I, I suspect while they're still working on doing studies, or case studies on them, that we're not going to lose them. But it doesn't obviously mean that they're being commercially supplied. But if it got really dire and there was no zebra daniels for some reason in New Zealand, They've got some, I'm sure there'd be an opportunity or a way to, to get hold of some to, to bring them back from the New Zealand extinction, as it were. I wonder what yeah, they're studying I'd... down there, eh? That'd be interesting. Yeah, I've, I've read it. Um, it's, it's nothing to do with the zebra Danio. It's just something that they, they carry a gene or a genetic that they carry that they're trying to trying to work through. Um, oh, yeah. I read it about a year or so ago, so I can't quite remember off the top of my head exactly what they're studying on them. Interesting why um, yeah. red top lycomas came from there, too. 
Um, really? I don't know what they were studying in African cichlids, but they they were there at one stage before the owner before me bought them from them. So yeah, wow. damn, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, my next fish is I've got two. Oh, which one's going to be more likely to succeed? I don't want to be the first one to get shot down. Um, I'm going to go with the <laughs> bristle nose. Um, oh, the reason yeah. I'm going to go with the bristle nose is you can get different colours. Um, you can get like the long fins, the the golds, the albinos, all that sort of stuff. And the main reason is that a lot of kids or even adults like trying to find them. So it's quite a um, it's a good way to get people interested in your tank. Like you know, we put a little tank in my partner's classroom. And the kids love looking for the bristle nose. They'll spend hours trying to find the bristle nose in there, you know. And it's a golden one, so it's easy to find. But sometimes they can't find it, you know. So, <laughs> so I'll throw what up the humble guys, bristle nose. What do you guys reckon for tank size for a bristle nose? I know it's a very mm. – it's There's an a area of contention I come across. Yeah. I've seen – I've kept them in quite small tanks, like 60 – you know, 45, 60 centimetres and never had any issues – um, some of them get giant though, like you've seen those twenty centimeter ones, but most of them don't seem to yeah. get that big, you know. I think the ones that get big are the ones that don't have the opportunity to reproduce early. So I've got a really big female that's been on her own the entire time, so she's never had the chance to spawn, which means she's never had to mm. reproduce eggs. So the energy's well, on my theory is the energy's gone on to actually growing in size, and she's really big. Oh, yeah. And I think that particularly the females is a, is a contributor for them to get really, really large. Um, but you're right, some of them do get, get quite big, you know, others stay a relatively moderate size, so it's probably some sort of genetics along the lines as well. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one. Like, people throw out all kinds of numbers, but, uh, you know, there is a lot of contention, I guess, um, especially in, like, you know, you see in the Facebook groups and stuff, like, people throw out all sorts, like, not even that close together, like, anything from, you know, like a two foot 60 liter tank to like three foot like 180 liter tanks but yeah i don't know i usually i'd i'd i'd, I'd probably say two foot's fine for just the one but ideally a bit bigger especially just for the beginners because like they are poop machines so mm. you obviously want to limit that for the for, for people who are super practiced but yeah it, it is a it's definitely an interesting area i think yeah. I um oh. I once visited a pleco breeder that used to produce like tens of thousands of bristle noses and he bred them all in two foot tanks. Um and the oh, bottom yeah. of the, the bottom of the tank was moving. Like you couldn't yeah. really see the bottom of the number of bristle noses. Now obviously he's um he knows what he's doing and um he was a very scientific fish keeper too, so he would measure everything every day and he's probably doing lots of water changes and really keeping on top of stuff so he could get away with a lot more than the average person. Um, but yeah, they can be kept in smaller tanks. I wouldn't say nano tanks, but you know, smaller tanks, you know, small enough yeah. for a beginner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the realm of sort of 60 centimeter, two foot sort of 60 liter tank for, for a single species. Um, always try and encourage people only by one and not to buy a group. As soon as you start buying two or three, the odds are a male, female. Once that happens, you're overrun with them. Um, but I think, yeah, a two foot 60 centimeter tank is about about a fair size for a, for a single individual bristle nose. Um, just seems to make sense around that size. You can do a little bit of cave work or a bit of woodwork or whatever um, and have yeah, them nice sure. and doing what they need to do in that, that tank as well. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, bristle, bristle nose didn't make my list, but it definitely got an honorary mention. Um, it was in the, <laughs> in the equation when I, was, when I was thinking about this. So, so far, we're all, looks like we're all on the same page. No. Well, I suppose I'll hmm, I'll throw out one that I know for a fact you guys will disagree with, but I think it's a very good idea, and maybe it's a little bit of a loophole fish, but an axolotl I think is a very good Gosh. is a good one really? for a, a few reasons. Uh, Number one, because they're on you, Minecraft. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I love Minecraft, but. No, because kids absolutely go crazy for them. And I have, like, many customers who, you know, their kids have found them on, like, TikTok or whatever, and then the kids go absolutely down the rabbit hole and know every single thing you could possibly know about an axolotl, convince their parents to get one, 
and then that's enough to start the seed of like the hobby, you know. And but the the good thing with axolotls as well is they're a bit specific in how to care for them, but they are super easy to look after. Like water changes, filter, feed them. That's it. Um, the tank setup's a bit specific, like you know the dim lights and only having sand or beer bottom or whatever. But once once you get that under control, very easy and very easy upkeep. And it's one like kids, but the whole family gets involved in. Like they start to, I find people who start with axolotls put more effort into understanding the water chemistry and like proper feeding and like learning why to do water changes and like put more effort or put more time and like love into it than like if you just get a couple, you know, golden barbs or whatever and just chuck them in a little tank. Um, so yeah, that's, I know you guys will disagree, but that was my sort of loophole fish that get a bit of a debate going. Um, first question is, are they, a, are they an actual fish? Are they considered a fish or are they just considered some kind of creepy, oh. gross looking thing? I think they are considered a fish, but not in the way that the average Joe would think about a fish. But My, my only argument to actual models would be I believe or consider them to be one of the more neglected animals in our in our trade. Um, oh, 100%. Being, being, a, being a younger person and going to a friend's house and that's a lot of and they were feeding it like raw beef heart and all that kind of stuff and bits of chicken and bits of steak and stuff like that. And to me, that's that kind of animal abuse and it's not what they should be eating. Um, 100%. It's causing them issues. So... <clears throat> I do agree that they're relatively hardy, pretty easy, and, and kids absolutely love them. Uh, um, my child pesters me for one nearly every day. But I think mm. that they are they're neglected or they're not cared for correctly in the sense of how they're actually looked after in the long run. Um, and then they, they're kind of like a passing fad, almost like a turtle, how they, they look really cute when the small people get them home and people forget they're a million years old before they die. Um, not that axolotls get that old, but but you know what I mean when I'm using that as as an example. Yeah, I mean, like, that, like an axolotl like, still live like twenty years, so mm, it is good, good time, pretty right? pretty long time. Not as long as a turtle, but long enough to consider compared to like a you know tetra or something little like that. Mm. They're technically a amphibian anyway, so they're not a fish. So they're off. <laughs> Didn't think they're a fish. Sucks to be you. Get that off the list. <laughs> nah. nah, I still claim it. <laughs> At least I didn't. I was going to put snails on the list, but I was like, nah, that might be a bridge too far. That's definitely oh. gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're sticking with your ex model then, regardless of it not being a fish? Yeah, man, I don't care. Okay. What are you going to do? So at the end of this, do we, do we have to agree on a list, or are we just okay. going to talk about them and throw some ideas out there? Um, we, go. we can really just see agree. we can just see where people agree and where they don't and then wing it. Yeah. Uh, what else you, you go got now, Cam? Me, What's me, it? okay. Yeah, man. Ah, it's like almost like we're going in some sort of order. Order. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've got the glow light tetra as my next option. Oh, that was one of mine. Yeah, I think they are they're hardy, which is great, like really hardy. I really like personally how the orange streak on them and the, the light, their eyes sort of glow a little bit, which I think is a really cool little trait to them. Uh, plant friendly, which a lot of people are really into. Um, relatively cheap and inexpensive, which is a bonus as well. They're definitely a great addition over things like a neon tetra. Um, yep. And they give you the opportunity to sort of experience a proper schooling fish keep them in, in decent sized groups and they really change their behavior to having them in two or three. Um, they're the kind of fish that you can almost consider as bulletproof as far as tetras go. Um, decent, decent ability to go in like a bigger tank or a slightly smaller tank. Um, kind of keep to themselves. There's no real big deal when it comes to other tank mates, as long as they're not big enough to be eaten uh, and ridiculously cool to watch feeding. So the, the glow light tetras are, are definitely up there for me. I think another 
the other I because I had them on my list and I agree with everything you just said. The only other thing that I had as well is I think it's really good, really cool how it's so easy to tell males from females. Like the females would be way more um, rounded, like with the eggs and that. Mm. And I find especially like kids and stuff love that because then when they're naming them, it's much easier to choose the names and like remember which is which because yeah. you can obviously like a cardinal or a neon or whatever all look the same more or less. So that's the only other thing I'd throw out there as well is um, especially for the young ones naming them um, makes makes life a bit easier, which is good. Yeah, how big do they get? Just neon size, neon and um, cardinal size, is it? Yeah, smaller than cardinals, look about the same size, a little bigger than neon. Oh, yeah. 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 I've never kept a glow light tetra, so I have no, um, nothing really intelligent to contribute here. Do you want well, to see I've seen, I've seen them in pet shops and they look a bit meh to me. They don't look that oh, cool. Oh, but, you know. They take a little while to settle in. The orange takes a little while to go mm. proper orange. Like, and and when they first come in, they'll be a bit small, and it's like a, it's like orange, but not that bright. It's kind of whatever. It's like a blue but then, like, yeah, yeah. But you get them home, and you give them maybe a month or so, and they'll be like bright, bright orange. Like, um, it actually works real well if you've got a planted tank because it's like that contrast. Is like obviously there's no orange plants or whatever really, so those two colors stand out against each other. Um, so yeah, but no, they're they're cool fish. I'll I'll give you some to put in Kim's tank, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I'm quite enjoying the other ones in there at the moment. Um, yep. Are we good to throw out another one, Nelly? Yeah, far away. Down. Uh, White cloud mountain minnow. Oh, um, that's a good one. Now, where, I, where, I find, where I find they're really good and I throw them out a lot is when people have got small tanks and try to stick goldfish in them. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, 100%. Don't put goldfish in them. Put some, put some java moss in there and um, some white cloud mountain minnows and they'll probably breed for you and they're hardy and they're colourful and I don't know the availability of them because I haven't seen them for a while, but you used to be able to get golds and long fins and all sorts of stuff and they're quite colourful and the babies are actually real get like a real iridescent um, sort of stripe through the middle when they're young, uh, which is pretty cool. I yep. used to have a big tank of them right next to my bed when I was a kid, and I used to just have thousands of them in there, and they were all awesome. So I, I definitely rate them. Yeah, they're, they're a good choice. What Because what I do is I always say, like, whenever someone comes in with, like, a little tank, and they're like, oh, yeah, I want to get a couple goldfish, I just point them to this, the gold white clouds, and I just say, get this as... It, it's exactly the same fish, except it'll stay the size it is now, pretty much. Like, but you're still going to get the same color and like shape and everything. But it's just a m much more suitable fish. And like, especially for that kind of situation, people are like, oh yeah, whatever, I don't care. It's like close enough. Um, but then even the the normal like bronze white clouds, they still, I think, have really cool color and work really well in a planted tank. Um, especially with like the little red bits they get on their fins. Um, but yeah, no, nah, that's a fantastic call. I mean, don't need a heater, feed easily, breed easily. What more could you want? Yeah, no, nothing, nothing bad to say about white cloud minnows. Um, yeah, I think, I think you've just might have shot that one to the top of the list for the need towards the plate. I think you yeah. didn't cross my mind, but probably agree with you. I, in particular, the, the gold ones are, are right up there for me. And for the same reason as you, Cam, someone's got a small tank on a goldfish. Not going to do it, so you want them, but let's have a look at these gold minnows. Um, they small, nice and active, keep them in a group, get more fish than one fish kind of thing. Um, yeah. And I think I ethically, it's it's a good choice because we, you know, as an industry, we probably need to discourage people from keeping goldfish as their first mm. fish in a small tank. Mm, you know, because it's... <laughs> It's not. It's been hasn't been the right place for them for a long time. But that that stigma yeah. and that um, mentality still seems to have hung around a bit, you know. So yeah, yeah man, hundred yeah. percent. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they might be extinct in the wild. Is that correct? Or I very, do not know. Very very low numbers in the wild. Oh, like white one. clouds. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw something that white clouds were. 
Yeah. I thought we were talking so, about goldfish, but <laughs> so it's the same sort of thing, you know, as far as ethically trying to keep things alive and that kind of stuff. That's another another one up there as well. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, interesting. Though, some... they, they are a member of the carp family, so um, <laughs> when you say they look like goldfish, that could be why. Oh. Mm. So Ryan's going to be Mr. Google for us uh, as, <laughs> as we're talking along. I was trying to see if they're actually extinct in the wild um, quickly. Are they, are they on the psyches list or anything like that? Did it show anything? Um, yeah. can't Who see, needs to do research beforehand, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep, just carry on. I'll, I'll keep, keep throwing stuff in. Keep All right. Well, I've got, I've got another one that you guys are going to disagree with. But no, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually going to say goldfish oh. for one, one very specific reason, because a lot of people don't want to have a tank in their house, but if you talk to them, a pond is definitely on the table, and it's it's a way for people to get involved with the hobby without having to do bring it into their house. Like, you can even just get those... I have a few people who get those preformed ponds, like the big... Um, I don't know what they are, like fiberglass almost? Almost like fiberglass a kid's pool type thing, eh? Yeah. It's, it's yeah, kind almost, of. Almost like that, similar to that, eh? Yeah, similar idea. Or you can get them in like all sorts of shapes with like little rock outcrops and stuff, and then they chuck that in their garden and, you know, set up a filter and everything. And they're more than happy with that. The kids love going and feeding them. They're a bit more forgiving than indoor fish because, like, nature's obviously more involved. But it's it's a way where people can kind of dip their toe into the hobby, so to speak, without having to go all out and, like, get a tank and have it in their living room and, like, stress if it's starting to look a bit meh. But, you know, you can still enjoy feeding them and giving them treats and, like, looking at them and all that kind of thing. So... Yeah, but I will also throw out the caveat that in the tank setting, goldfish is no good. Even like fancy goldfish, like if you've got a three-foot tank with, you know, a black moor or something, I wouldn't recommend that for a beginner because, you know, they're messy, it's hard, they get big, all this kind of thing. No good. I'm talking about specifically in the pond setting, so yeah. I don't know if you could have a beginner's fish that's supposed to be easy and not set them up and then have all these caveats. It'll be like saying, oh, an arrow one is a great first fish, but you've got to have a 10-foot tank. Well, no, that, that, yeah, that's, you know, like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's, for, for, <laughs> it's saying a pond is a good first setup, basically. Are we saying the is top it? five beginner pond fish or are we saying the top yeah. five beginner I, I, fish? Yeah. Yeah, fish I'm, in I'm general. I, yeah, I don't know. Do people begin with ponds, or is that is that how I have how plenty of people that do? I have plenty you know, of people that do. Like, there's people who buy houses that already have ponds, and like, they have no interest in a tank, but they get invested in their pond. Or like, you know, I don't want anything in my house, but we'll get the kids a little preformed pond or medium-sized preformed pond outside, or whatever. Um, I have quite a few people like that. I think you're making things up because I've never had that before. My well, because you live in Nelson. We bought a house that had a pond, and he has an inherited a pond, and he's done everything that he can to look after said pond. Um, so I'll give you that. People buy them with them. But saying that, I've had plenty of people give me a ring, say, "Look, I've bought a house. It's got a pond. I don't want the fish. I'm going to dig it in. Do you want the fish?" So yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can agree with that one. It's interesting. I, I think if someone came up to you and said, what's the five top beginner fish, and you said a goldfish, yeah. they're going to stick it in a bowl. Yeah. Because well, that's where fish go, in a goldfish bowl. <laughs> you know, like... yeah. Well, that's when I would direct them towards white clouds, of course. You didn't listen to the previous part of the podcast, mister. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, no. Contentious, contentious, I think, that one. Yeah. Hey, man, that's I'm what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm not letting that one past the goalie. It's a no go. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. What do you got then? I've got honey gouramis. Mm. 
Right. That's a good one. Particular honeygaramis in particular, they are hardy. The males get the most phenomenal color. Um, keep them by themselves. Get a single male. You can name it. Get the interaction out of the male if you choose to do. Um, easy to look after. Lots of options for potential tank mates. Uh, if you want a nice and slow and steady tank, they work really well for that. Feeding them is no issues whatsoever at all. Um, as far as bubble nest breeders go, they're also a relatively good starter if you want to play around with spawning them as well. Um, bang for buck, they're pretty good fish. Uh, don't have a lot of genetic issues. Um, and they're a fairly good price for the type of fish that you get as well. So I, I think honey garamis are, are right up there. Um, the other the other good thing about them is they're um, labyrinth fish, which basically means that they can um, breathe atmospheric oxygen um, with this organ called a labyrinth. So they can be, obviously you want to make sure you have good water quality, but as a beginner, if you're making mistakes or whatever, they can be a bit more forgiving than stuff that doesn't um, have that ability. Um, so yeah, that I, I did have, well, I was going to put that on my list, but I had a suspicion that you'd be putting it on yours. Um, so I didn't include it, but I think it's a good choice. Like, uh, you know, you, you've got the color and it's a good um, little centerpiece fish. So yeah, I'd a hundred percent agree with that one. It's on a small tank as well, which, you know, like again, we're basing on beginners. In my mind, a two foot tank is a lot of sort of beginner people start 60 liters and that kind of mark. Um, yep. Which I think honey grammys fit into quite nicely as well. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I'd agree cool with fish. That. I agree. I agree with them. Yep. Um, I've also seen it, like you say, a lot of a lot of people seem to breed them um, mm. as well, which is cool. So you often see home bred ones popping around and, and nice ones on online. A lot yep. better than um, the neon blue guamis, guamis and stuff like that. that yeah. yeah. Seem to be prone cases. to all. Yeah. Well, they can be quite aggressive, the males, but also they're prone to all sorts of nasty bugs, you know. Yeah. And they just, yeah. you see so many showing up online with spots and wounds and funny stuff yeah. going on that you just, I think they're just a weak fish. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, um, I reluctantly carry those fish, and anyone, time that anyone looks at them, I say, look, the Brunions are prone to all these options, all these possibility things. So if you're prepared to have the potential to put these kind of into them, but still otherwise, honey dramas are up there and they're, they're just as amazing. Yeah, yeah. I do get, I, I quite often get people dealing with the, um, you know, the aridivirus problems and it's pretty much just like, you know, there's not much you can do really. It, yeah. it sucks, but, you know, That's pretty much, yeah. Uh, Put it down, kind of thing. Yeah, as long as us as retailers or other retailers are very transparent with that, at least people know what they're potentially getting into as well. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was like honey drivers because they come in in multiple of colors. Obviously, your standards, your gold um, and the red ones as well. I don't think the yep. gold and the red are quite as nice as the, um, as the standard honey, personally. But they're pretty much the same fish with the same paint job, with the paint job but they're just as hardy and just as easy going, which is nice. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. All right, you're up, Ryan. I'm up. Um, I was going to throw the better out there. I I didn't think they were very cool until we kind of had one, and um, they had a bit of size and a bit of different colour and a bit of something different to a tank. Um, obviously, you've got to be careful what you keep them with, so there is that consideration as well. So it's probably not the Ideal beginner, beginner fish, but I still think they're pretty cool, and a lot of people start with them from there. I know that um, I've seen people probably not the best thing to do, but use them as centerpieces for weddings, and then send them home with all the kids and stuff. Um, you know, yeah, and get people into it that way. Um, but yeah, I think they're cool. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. They're they're. The other good thing about them is they're one that everyone knows. Like even non-fish people know a fighting fish or like know of them. So it's a less scary way for people to kind of dip their toe in without having to sort of go down the rabbit hole of learning about all these different types of fish. Um, but yeah, I mean, no, nah, I'd I'd say that'd be a, that'd be a good choice again. Like pretty much any color you can think of, um, all different fin varieties all this kind of good stuff so yeah i'm gonna 
disagree with you on that one. Um, I I agree the amount of color variations, thin variations are, are the popular thing. I put them in the same sort of category as some of the more neglected fish in the industry. Um, I think they're kept in too small of a tank, particularly for by beginners. Um, and small tanks can then occur water condition water condition issues really easily. Um, as a beginner fish, I, I don't I don't agree. Um, yeah, I, I think there are better options than them. They can also be prone to things like fin rot and that kind of stuff. Fairly easy when they're not looked after properly. I think they're not fed correctly by beginners as well. Um, they can have internal issues when they're fed too much or fed the wrong food, uh, which beginner people are often more prone to throwing more food in, so I think that's another down on them. Um, I agree with you in the sense like keeping them as an individual where they become a pet and interactive with the owner and can really get people flourishing in the hobby for that sort of side of it, which I think is really good. But overall, I don't, I don't think they are a good beginner fish. They're also very short-lived as well. Um, two years for a fish, we get them nine months to a year old. They're already beginning potentially to be having issues with them. Um, so I don't, I don't think that they are a good beginner fish. Yeah, that that is interesting because there is, uh, I think they fall into that category of just like there is a lot of bad quality stuff around um, yep. for them, particularly um, from the imported ones. Um, the good thing with the betas is there's a lot of uh, very good breeders around. Um, mm -hmm. They're one that everyone and their dog is breeding, but I, finding those ones can be a bit difficult. Um, and obviously, if they've got you know quality issues to begin with, then it's going to be less forgiving um, of you know, mistakes that can be made, particularly when it's like your first fish or like your first tank or whatever, um, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely something to be mindful of, but I would still say they would be a good beginner fish. Maybe not like the super big, like the um, super deltas or something like that. They can be the massive fins that can be a bit more fin rock prone and this kind of thing. But like, you know, just like the normal kind of common long fins or whatever, I think I think they can be a good choice. So, yeah, you're wrong. I, I can concede that um, keeping them in, like, a community tank, again, basing, like, a two-foot, six-litre tank could be a good option, but I think when people keep them individually in, like, the 10-litre or the 11-litre tank sort of thing, or the really small square Aqua 1 tanks so are very hideous, I think that's when yeah. people – that's when I think they're not a good – not a good beginner fish, and they shouldn't be on the on the table for that sort of scenario. So, um, man, yeah, I, I hate I those tanks so much. We're probably we're probably on we're probably on board that they're not of a good beginner tank anyway. For, for any, really, apart from I don't snails. think whatever you do with them, you're going to have success. So, no, maybe no. that's more the issue. We don't. I mean, they're probably for shrimp, really. I mean, and we don't get them in New Zealand, so you know, oh, yeah. like. <laughs> Yeah. I know a couple yeah, of people I, who put like fry in them, but I mean that's a very specific purpose that's not going to be suitable for you know any beginner really. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always say like whenever someone comes and asks, I always say bare minimum is like the third Blue Planet thirty liter tanks. Yeah, which is like I think forty five centimeters long off the top of my head. The it's like big enough for it's like a little bit easier to dilute any sort of problems that you might, you know, encounter big enough where you can like, you're not limited to like, okay, you can choose between these two fish. Like you've got a little bit more room to like do some marginally bigger stuff like your, you know, like your white clouds or whatever, do a oh, couple, was... like chuck a better with a couple other things, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I try and encourage minimum of 20 liters for a, for a single better or maybe a single better and a couple of autos or something like that. Um, Hundred percent. That's what I say as well. Yeah, and I, I try and emphasise the fact that if you're going this small, you're limiting to what you can have. And if you really want to be limited, then you're fine. If you don't want to be limited, maybe push up towards a fifty or a sixty liter tank where you can open up. I think open up the, the the limited sides. Bit, it's like it's easier for you know someone who's maybe a bit more deep in the hobby because mm. 
you know, you know what you want to get. Like you've, you know, you live and breathe fish. It's like, oh yeah, I really want to get this specific thing. And I just have one of them in like one snail and I'll be happy. That's fine. But if it's like, you don't really know, you don't want to get to that stage where it's like, oh, okay, I've bought my, you know, one fish and like a couple glow lights or whatever, or a few glow lights or whatever. And now I can't have anything else. But then I discover this other fish that I really want to get, but tank's too small, not enough room. Um, this hobby sucks, basically, which yeah. of course we want to discourage and enable people to have their have their success. So yeah, we should be enabling them to have mini tanks, though. So the, the right. answer is they just need to buy a bigger tank. Yeah, exactly. But you got to build them up slowly, otherwise it's too scary. For people. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the answer when you when you can't fit a fish, you just buy another tank for it. You yeah, know, like, tank. we know that. Yeah, that's how we all ended up into situations we're in currently. The slippery <laughs> slope. This can't live with this, so I have to get a new tank for this, and then this one can't live with this yeah. one. So look at it now; I've got a million tanks. No, I have too exactly. many tanks for my house. I need to build a fish room. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, All right, uh, so, so that was better, which is wrong. Yep. So uh, Jerry's out. Jerry. Um, so I'm it's I'm my turn now. Because it's going to be 2v1. So, all right. It's a democracy, I guess. Um, (laughs) So, it's my turn now. Um, I'm going to say one (laughs) again that I don't know if either of you will agree with, but, you know, I guess I'm going to be the unpopular opinions guy. Um, I think electric yellows or yellow labs is a good option because Mm. oftentimes, you get someone who has a little bit bigger of a tank, maybe like a three foot tank and they're wanting something a bit bigger, a bit more colorful, a bit more active. And of the African cichlids, I think that'd be the easiest for a beginner. They're much more peaceful than like a lot of other options, a lot smaller um, breed relatively easily. So yeah, I'd say that would be of that category. I'd say that would be your best bet. Um, just like some of those and like nothing else or like, you know, maybe some Dems if you're feeling frisky. But um, yeah, I'd say that would be a, it, it's an option for the people who want to go a little bit bigger and like maybe spend a bit more money on a, um, you know, bigger setup with like some more fancier bits and pieces and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Oh, I was going to put them on there too, but, I just think there's too many provisos with it. I just think there's too many, there's yeah. too many for it to be successful. I mean, yes, I agree with you. If someone comes in with a three or four foot tank, there's no, in my mind, there's no other better fish in the world, you know, because yeah. in Africa, in Africa it's you just put, put yellows in it, put all sorts of cool stuff in it. But, um, I don't know. I just don't see that many beginners. Even people that come out to buy African cichlids off me often show up with a giant tank and it's a two foot. You know, and I'm just yeah. like, well, you know, <laughs> Casey came at the pet shop and buy something else, you know. Um, yeah, I'm loath to to disagree with an African cichlid, but I, I struggle with that one because I just think, like like goldfish, there's too many other things that have got to be, you know. Yeah. I, I think for, for you, I think it's a bit different because what, since I've had the shop, what I've noticed is, like, there's a lot more very casual people who'd like never even consider that you could go online and find someone selling fish out of their backyard. But <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Have, you know, get one of them blue planet. Um, what's it called? The essentials blue planet essentials, three foot tank. And, you know, cause they're like, Oh, I want something really cool in my living room, but you know, they're not going to buy a massive, you know, peacock and yeah, hat tank or whatever cheap. but those tanks are cheap yeah exactly they're, they're like ridiculously cheap for what they yeah, are exactly they're like yeah. Great and there's people time. there's enough people who fit into that category want something cool but not you know they want to spend you know maybe a thousand dollars setting it up but they don't want to spend four thousand dollars setting it up and come into my shop and see my peacocks and haps and like oh I want that. And I'm like, yeah, that's going to be too big. But look at these. They're like pretty much the same thing to a beginner looking at it, but stay a little, much less, you know, 
crazy um, aggro-wise and will be much more manageable for these people. And, you know, I've got plenty of – I've had plenty of people come in who've, like, had them and then they get, like, I don't know, a, a bristle nose and, like, some cool rocks or whatever and then that's them off to the races because it's much more approachable um, for those people who want to maybe go a little bit bigger and a little bit more – spend a little bit more money to do something that's more of a, like – centerpiece for their living room rather than just like a little tank for the kids type of situation um so yeah i mm. i'm going to disagree with you on it of course on, on, i agree with you that they are a fantastic beginner african circle for all the points that you pointed out i 100 percent concede and agree um easy hardy uh, not that aggressive all that kind of stuff but i don't think that they are a good beginner beginner fish um, I'm envisioning someone that's just really fresh to the hobby, and I don't think the African cichlids are a good fresh to the hobby. They're the next kind of step through. You've, you've had a wee play around with communities and you might want to get into something slightly different. Um, I also personally don't think that three foot's big enough for yellows. I think they're better off in a four foot. And I know Ryan's probably going to disagree with me, and you're probably going to disagree with me, but that's my own personal belief on, on retro yellows. They need to be a little bit bigger than that. I think um, everything's better off in a bigger tank, of I totally course. Agree. Like, but I think, I think the yellows the- will be like yellows. Of I think they're fine in like one of those blue planet ones. Like, obviously, you don't want too many, and like you want the tank set up right and everything. But I think some like a group, little group of electric yellows with, you know, a bristle nose and like, oh, probably that's about it. Is is fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think you can you can you definitely you, start off. On a, you can definitely start off in a tank that's small with them. And I breed in a lot of smaller tanks, but I know what I'm doing. And, and, um, and ratio pretty, pretty ratio pretty is important. Ratio is important, and hundred percent. Everything else is important, with, especially with African cichlids. That's why I think yes, Cam. If someone comes in and sees you, or probably any of us, then the Lechis and Electric Yellow could be a good option. If they go into Animates or another store. Maybe not, because they might get sold one, and they might yeah. not get the right advice, or they might not get yeah. the right stocking. That's so you know, and that, that not something I'd point. considered. That's my next point. Animates we'll... or whatever sell them, and old Joe Joe Blow's got a few guppies and and a corridor or whatever in their two and a half three foot tank. Mm. Oh, I like these, and the right questions aren't being asked, and all of a sudden they've got an electric yellow with their guppies, and all of a sudden they've got no guppies. And we all know that they have, some, a really they'll have a they'll have a really happy electric yellow though. So I mean, you know, it's, it's always yellow. a balancing act. Yeah. They're, they're looking after the, the, the needs of the yellow. Yeah, I'm annoyed I didn't consider that. Because I don't think it's a question, people, but I 100 percent agree. My other thought on that is also we're going to base on a three foot tank. How many yellows do you think you can put in a three foot tank comfortably for the average beginner? Beginner. We're all going to disagree. Better. I know, but, but what, what, what are we thinking here? Three, four, five, six, 12, 30? I'd start with I'd say like 10, oh. 8 to 10 probably, be what I'd start with. And then be saying you're going to say, remove a couple of males. Okay. Yeah, I'd say you'd want to end up with like six to eight, like one male or no males. Okay. So we'll, six to eight, we'll go right in the middle of seven. As a beginner with a beginner fish tank with a three foot tank, do you think seven electric yellows is going to wow the new fish keeper? I do, yes. You do? I do. I I very much do. I disagree. (laughs) And I believe that new fish keepers like having lots of fish, lots of different sorts of fish, lots of interaction, lots of color, lots of activity, which you get from the yellows, but varying bits, which you don't get. To me, seven yellows in a three-foot tank for a beginner is a little bit bland. I know electric yellows are bright and colourful and they're cool fish, ridiculously hardy, but I think that becomes a little bit of a bland beginning tank. I understand what you're saying, but I do disagree. And (laughs) the other thing that... The other thing I just remembered... I'm annoyed I didn't think this through hard enough. I think I got a bit excited. (laughs) But the classic pet shop yellows suck. And so that's yep. not going to be any fun. Like mm-hmm. the kind of brownie gray ones, that's not mm-hmm. going to be any fun. I'm talking about like yellow, electric yellows is probably more what I'm talking about because then you get that bright color where you wouldn't get them from the normal pet shop ones. But I think a group of yellows 
would wow people because it's something general, you know, average public person isn't going to even consider you can keep fish like that. So, you like, you know, they're having someone over, they walk into their living room and wow, there's these like big bodied, bright yellow, black striped fish. Like, what is that? Tell me about it, all this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think in that sense, and they're like, you can kind of figure out personalities and everything. So, even if you've got like kids or like, you know, the neighbor's kids or whatever, can there are fish where you can name them? and like learn them easily enough compared to like, you know, even something like a platy, not going to be as easy. Like, Oh yeah, that's not, you know, you can't name them as easily in a way that's kind of going to be meaningful for, for the average person. So, yeah. I guess you've also just, just, just pointed out a point that I believe makes them not suitable for a beginner is that you've got to get quality ones. So again, if someone comes to us three, they can get good quality ones. But if they go to another store, like you go to the stores around the place and you see these horrible crossbred ones or ones with sunken in bellies and horrible stuff. So again, it does. It's really it's really situational dependent, isn't it? I, I I'd love to sell everyone yellows, but you know. And again, I don't see you guys see a lot more different. We all got we all got we also we also we all see different people. You know, mm. I'm. Um, I don't see a lot of people anymore because I don't bother really selling that much. I sell to you guys. So, you know, um, you guys see a lot more of the public, so you do know more about what's happening. And I guess your name's Cooler Cam on here, so we'll call call, call Cooler Cam up in Auckland here, um, (laughs) is specialising more in African cyclists. So he probably does have a lot more people that are are keen to come in. And so I guess it's how how we define a beginner. How do we define a beginner? Like, you know, <laughs> someone yeah. that can walk into any store and buy any fish or someone that can walk into Cam, Cooler Cam Auckland store and buy a fish? Yeah. I, I also, personally, I genuinely believe that people that are beginning want to, they've got the bug, they want to buy a new fish, they want to see a new fish in their tank on a regular basis and you can't do that so much with electric gallons. Um, again, we're basing beginner numbers, three foot, maybe four foot tank, not a five foot monster where you can continue to add more fish to it. And I think that that takes him off that list of um, being suitable for a beginner tank. Fair <laughs> enough. I I still I still stand behind it, and I still think it is a good option. But have in you, your um, store, like, probably, in your store, it probably, probably is. And you, if people come see you, yeah. it probably is definitely. You know, if they like them, there's no reason why they can't be successful if they're properly set up. And if they've got the right scaffolding around around that in terms of support yeah. and stocking and the right size tank and, and, and the right food and all that stuff to start with, you yeah. know, like then they're, yeah. they're going to be fine. But they are hardy fish, they're cool fish, fish, you know. But that's all those caveats that if they're putting all these extra things into it, are they really a beginner fish? Are they really a good option for this list? I don't disagree that they're cool, they're bright, they're colourful, they're really good as far as African cichlids go. Like I, I can agree on everything you've said, but you're wrong. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's see what your next suggestion is then, huh? Punk? <laughs> oh, coming up firing now, are you? <laughs> uh, so this was on my honourable mentions list, but I've decided to um, promote them up into the top five, and I'm going to go with keyhole cichlids. You can't oh, yeah. trash yellows and then say that. Why not? Because that's a terrible option. I why not? Can I can I at least just... you why I think they're a good option? Well, I'll let you say why you think you they are first, and then I'll trash you. Okay. They are hardy. They are not aggressive. Even when they're spawning, they're not aggressive. They don't get too big. You can keep a single one as an individual show fish um, quite easily into your community tank. Um, I think they are very under underutilized for what they are. They kick to themselves. They've got some nice color traits to them. Um, they're really undemanding as well. Like I just think in general, if you're wanting to go into the dwarf cichlid range or into the cichlid world, you know, I think they're a really good start. They're not aggressive like African cichlids are because they're cycle. Um, so I think they're a good option when you were when you're wanting to start into that into that world. They're not as not as disease prone or as hard to keep as things like German rams, which can be really finicky. 
They've got lots of um, spectrum when it comes to water conditions and feeding conditions. So I think they're a really good option when getting into uh, or wanting to get into slightly bigger um, cichlids or dwarf cichlid realm. And they can go in black water tanks, which are awesome. I think um, which beginners hate. They probably um, they probably get a little bit bigger than what you know. They're also kind of a boring little brown fish. I did, as a beginner, I, I did go through a stage to go through a stage of wanting to keep them, and I did actually keep them for a while in one of my tanks. But um, yeah, I guess they're a cichlid, so that's cool. But I don't know, yeah. they don't do a lot. Of, they do a lot more else for me, really. I think Personally, if you're gonna you know. if you're gonna be looking at them, I think probably a Bolivian ram is gonna be a better beginner that's option. They, that's what they knocked off on my list. I uh, think a Bolivian ram is a much it's basically a keyhole except better colours, more interesting behaviour in my opinion. I, I disagree. I think they're a bit cooler. Oh, like right. they get but yeah, the keyholes I don't know if I can get behind that. They're just kind of like not really any interesting color or pattern or anything. And like, You're I'm sure their behavior is cool, but I think there's better options to observe that behavior um, or in interesting behavior in general. So, yeah. They, um, as they mature, they do take some time to mature, which is unfortunate. But as they mature, they do get some really nice yellow and sort of green colorations to them. Um, and obviously, they're called a keyhole because of the, the markings on them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think they're, they are a good option. And, and the main point for me is how unaggressive they are. Like, they are really, really, really unaggressive. Um, a friend of mine kept them with his guppies just to try and keep the population of guppies down. And they'd only eat the fry. They wouldn't tuck no interest in the adults. It was just picking off the fry. And so I think... I think for that reason alone, that they are just so placid, makes them a really good option when it comes to if you want to have a cichlid in the into your community tank. Yeah, that's fair. I just think it it misses out some of the best parts of cichlids, um, which is that color. And like, I've never I've never kept them really, um, aside from like in the shop. So it's not something i've ever had appeal to me but yeah i just think the color and like just like appearance wise i think it leaves a bit wanting um for you know joe blow hobbyist again i think they're another one like a rainbow fish that in a shop they look quite bland when they get home once they develop like i said they do take a while to develop but once they're developed they become a very very nice fish a nice goldie. Well, maybe it's something fish. I'll have to look at. <laughs> <laughs> it's you interesting you know, once, you, once you start. It also depends what you've kept and what you like as well, doesn't it, really? Um, yeah, 100%. It's all kind of a little bit biased, you know. I've got 60 yeah, tanks of, of African cichlids, so, you know. <laughs> but but you I have kept and bred a lot over the years. But you did concede that electric yellows aren't a good... Well, I had, I, they were you on there, but... They were on there for me, but then I thought, well, look, there's just too much. There's too many variables there. Yes, if they come see me or Cam or anyone that's responsible and doing the right thing and knows what they're doing, they're going to be successful. But if they just wander into a random, any Joe Blog sort of retail chain store, they're probably just going to get sold them and set up. I do concede that. that. That's, that's a fair point. And that's where keyholes are really good because they've got such a big spectrum of availability ways to be kept. Yeah, and, and you can just have a brown fish in your tank. That would be great. Yeah, yeah man. What more could you want? Brown's a colour as well, man. Yeah. Code I'd head on a brown fish. All right. What you got, Ryan? What's your, your lucky I'll last? I'll throw one out there that's Was it not last, but... Uh, um, interesting. <laughs> Brevis. I'm going to throw out Brevis. Little shell-dwelling Brevis. Um... That's now one I had on. I, I was thinking about. They're not. Then you could probably argue that they're a boring little brown fish. Um, Cam probably will. They are a little brown like fish. Keyhole. Um, but they have also got a lot of really interesting behaviours and a lot of really cool interactions. And if you wanted to have a little twenty-five liter tank on your desk or somewhere or on your bench or something, that'd be awesome. You know. 
Uh, not as colourful as showy as that. other things, you know, but um, really interesting. You know, like if someone is really wants something they can look at and enjoy and watch interacting with each other and then sort of get involved in, that's where you go. Um, not as bright as some of the other stuff, but still really awesome fish, you know, and you plant out. I think it's something, and, yeah. something different, you know, like um, something that people wouldn't have seen before, but still very beginner friendly, I'd say. Um, and I mean, so like on the color thing, they do get that kind of bluey, they do get the blue in them. iridescent yep. eye, yep. which is quite cool. And then the other thing with them is like, I don't know if this is a going to be a controversial take, but you like can keep other stuff with them, you know, like your um, Danios or like your um, what are they called? The Lampi killifish is a popular one, or um, platies or whatever will be fine with them. Um, so yeah, I I would agree with that. I would I would have put them on my list, but I didn't. But well, I, I, had, I didn't put call. an African cichlid on there because I couldn't put. I didn't feel like I could put um, exactly yellows on there, so I had to put one on there. You know, um, oh, I'm sure Cam under, is going to tell us about why that why we're wrong. You know? I'd agree they're underrated. Um, I'm 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 going to sit on the fence on this, and I'm going to let you see if you can sway me which way you want to. They are cool fish. They do in a small size tank. Um, they are hardy. Like everything you said, 100 correct. My question is availability. So, how easy is it for a beginner to get hold of of these fish? They come so see me easy. and Ryan. It's easy as. You just need to tell me because I can. Yeah, uh, availability of them won't be an issue. Two, two but the, the demand's not there at the moment. The demand's not there at the moment, so we're spreading the word about Brevis, and, and we'll push the demand up a little bit, and people will actually enjoy them and keep them. So the other not, thing I will say, fine. which, oh, now you go, Kim. Yeah, you're not pushing, again, beginner, I think, needs to be available. Now, if these were relatively available in lots of different shops or lots of different people's hands, you know, I think I could absolutely agree with you. I think they're in there. But for a beginner that's just decided to buy a fish tank from, we're going to use animates because that seems to be the theme throughout this conversation, where are they going to find Brevis if they don't know? I think the reason, the thing is, Brevis could be easily, like, very easily available. But could, no one but wants them to be. Could, but aren't. But could very easily be. Same could be That's said about plenty of little community fish that currently aren't really around. The ones we're trying to get hold of, but we can't. But anyway. Well, that, <laughs> that is an option, but there's plenty of other ones. Yeah, yeah I... I I'm, I'm it's interesting. If, we, if we're going to call a beginner as walking into... And animates or other chain store, then the brevis can't be on there because, like you say, they can't get them. Yeah, but, but yeah, every, I am every, saying every, if they could, if they could get them, yeah. there's probably not a lot they could go. You can go wrong with them. You know, they are yeah. really hardy. They are really cool. Yeah. If the criteria is what is available at animate, to be fair, we're going to have gonna about, talk about six fish. ten or fifteen fish <laughs> to choose from max. So, well, I mean, I'm like not. Forest, you could be it. Yeah, well, that's a whole different conversation. We're using animation as an example just because we're nationwide, but I'm, I'm sure we're kind of understanding where that, that conversation is. And there yeah, could be some where the beginner goes to buy their fish and their first fish in their first tank because they know it and they're walking yeah, past it with their dog or their cat or whatever. Yeah, we, we've all got pet shops in whatever region we're in in New Zealand or around the world. But pet shops is probably a better way of putting it. They're just not readily available there, or they can't be ordered in by them, and that sort of stuff. And that, that's probably my only, my only thing when it comes to beginner fish for for the brewers. Yeah, I'd agree with that, but well, I guess I'll I just have to crank them and get everyone having having. I don't know if that doesn't make them a good beginner fish, though. Yeah, I I I'd <laughs> side with Ryan there. As a beginner, how are you going to get hold of them? Come see me. But if you can see you, if, if you I'll, could, I'll, Jimmy, from, Jimmy from Gore doesn't know you exist. So how can Jimmy from Gore walk to a shop and find them? Or, yeah, you know? but lives in Gore, he, so you know. I think there's still <laughs> plenty of people that couldn't could get get some. Yeah, but, but, but like, you're now. You're yeah, a plenty of like. I see. We, I see. We, you, I see your idea. Yep. 
Yeah. We, we, I understand we, what you're saying, but I think there is enough around relatively easily available. Because I'm sure on, if... Tra- tra- if me plenty... Off. Trade me. And if plenty, plenty of people, if they go to if their the local fish there, store... That would be there. Yeah, if they go to their local fish store, plenty of fish store owners will know Ryan is the guy to contact if you're after Brevis. So that option is on the table, you know. Like, it might not be a one you walk in and grab off the shelf, but it wouldn't be too hard for people to get them. Um, okay. There is so fish there's store there's owners to get them. As a beginner, where do they find that they – where do they find the Brevis? To go, oh, I wouldn't mind getting this as my first fish or my second fish sort of thing. They look up podcasts about what's a good beginner fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I no, think we, people... I think we can see where everyone stands on this one anyway. We, we, yeah. yeah. We've got to well, move on, right. otherwise we won't get to five each. We're already over an hour. Is anyone still going to be listening at call. this point? Oh, we talking I'm, to ourselves? No. <laughs> if you're still listening, comment the word hot dog and we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my last one is is going to be Corydoras Aeneas, but specifically the albino quarry. Yeah, they because, were because specifically the albino, because it's something that looks very weird and very different, but it's still very easy to keep. Um, pretty much the most bulletproof quarry there would be. Um, adds activity to like a different layer of the tank. So like, you know, you've got your platies or whatever in the middle, but you can get your quarries going along the bottom. Um, yeah, easy, active, look weird, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, that, that's going to be my option. I agree. I was going to put Corey's on there, but um, I was going to just put Corey's as general because, like, you can get the little panda Corey's for a smaller team. You can get the bronze ones. You can get the albino ones. You can get, even for people who get a bit fancy, you can get all the fancy ones, you know, and you can get really confused yeah. about whether it's a false Julie or a real Julie or look at the different lines and patterns and stuff. Story and try of my and- life get right into it but um yeah i think as a beginner like there's not a lot that can go wrong with them they are pretty tough they're pretty resilient and they're cool yeah. and they also clean up uneaten food which is can can be a bit of a curse for beginners yeah. to overfeed yeah. and yeah. having a little scavenger fish in there can actually save you a little bit you know yeah, yeah I, I had on my you know possibly list was bronze quarry with a slash with albino as well um i, I totally agree as far as albino fish go, they're really hardy as well, which is not a normal trait for a white albino fish. They're normally a bit prone to disease and issues, but they, they aren't. Yeah, exactly. Um, and because they're white, they seem to really stand out as well. Like I, I totally agree. I think they're a better option than bronze. I think they're far cooler, and I'm not a massive albino fan. I'd agree. So I, 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 I'd I agree. Totally... I think they're better than bronze and like the orange and that because it's just like it's just something so weird and so different that you know, your average person is just going to be like, what in the heck is that thing? Yeah. And they're nice and cheap as well. Um, exactly. The only, only thing that I would, would say, and this probably goes with any sort of schooling fish, is people beginning in fish want to only keep one or two and consider that a group. Um, um, as opposed to keeping them in bigger numbers where they really flourish. That'd be my only, my only thing with The good them. thing... The good thing about them, though, is you could have like two albinos, two bronzes, and two oranges, and because they're all Corydoras Aeneas, they're still going to school together and everything. But you can have like three different, like visually, three different types of quarries, but not have to sacrifice the happiness, the happiness of the fish. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. So um, yeah. Also, a lot of people beginning only want to buy two or three or something at a time, but you know, grab grab a couple this week and then maybe a couple of weeks time, come back and grab a few more and, and you can kind of develop them that way as well. Um, but yeah, that, yep. that would be my only wee, wee downside to any any sort of schooling fish or grouping fish that need a group is that beginners tend to only like to have a couple of these and a couple of these and a couple of these. But as a whole, I totally agree. I've been on a great little cat there. Also on that is right. um, we, we've got to encourage people to just buy a couple at a time too so they don't just buy like, 20 fish, bung them all in and crash the tank. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah this, exactly. That's a good consideration. We just yeah. got to keep things, you Catch know, 23 on that for sure. Yeah. There's things we can get away with with experience, but for a beginner, we've got to be real careful that yeah. they do things slowly and carefully and understand what's going on in their tank and don't 100%. end up with a disaster. Yeah. Yep. 
All right. Yeah. What's your What's your next suggestion, Cam? I've done five, mate. You've done five. I've did done I five. do five? Or have I done you six? Have... You might oh, have done six. Classic. Because I didn't even separate out the um, reserves. So I've probably done one of my reserves, but that's all right. Did you have any others you wanted to add, Ryan? No, I just that's me pretty much. I just wanted to poke holes at your guys' ideas and agree with you or disagree with you. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, I think we do have like I think you could go through all the things we've talked about and pick, you know, maybe you can have your two foot tank, you can pick out like your albino quarries, your glowlight tetras and your platys. And I think you can build a pretty good beginner like a very easy beginner tank that I think people will have success with, but also will enjoy all the different colors and different, you know, activities and all this kind of thing, um, which will get people started in the hobby, which is, I think all that's, I think the main thing about the beginner tank is like kind of planting that seed in people's head where it's more than just like a, something that sits on the kid's bedside table that you forget about in two days. It's, it's something a bit more that you're a bit more emotionally or um, yeah, emotionally invested in, um, which is how people start the love for the hobby and then get their, you know, get their fish rooms going or get their big display tanks going, um, which at the end of the day is what I think we all want. Um, so yeah, I, 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 think, I think we've, covered a lot of bases success is the key right we're just trying to we want people to be 100%. set up with a not failure you yeah. know because keeping yeah. fish is easy and it can be done yeah. easily and cheaply you know and that's what we're going to be going through probably probably have some other subjects on this as well yeah it doesn't have to be hard it doesn't have to take a lot of time or money to be successful with fish, you know? i think people um i think that's a problem probably it's a bit of a topic for another day but i think a problem in our industry is people trying to overcomplicate things to make it more expensive to get more money out of them um, with your things like, you know, I know Cam doesn't agree, but like things with your bottle bacteria, for example, or like, you know, your water um, clarifiers or like the um, algae fixes, all this kind of thing. It's just like more money that overcomplicates it and people fail. And then we wonder why they leave the hobby. Um, so, but that definitely yeah, think- is a discussion for another time. <laughs> exactly. I think I think if you're one. starting off with the fish we've talked about, you'll you'll be off off to a good start at least. Um, Except for which is all you can ask for. Um, uh, disagree, but sure. Um, <laughs> all right. So yeah, I think that's that's it for today. But um, if you enjoyed, make sure to let us know what you think, or if we've missed something hilariously obvious, let us know. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll catch you again next time. All right. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. See you later.